Okay, I know that I need to do an intro to the video, but it just, you know, the first intro made sense. Like, this is my first video, hello, but what am I, what am I supposed to say at the second video? Hello, welcome to my second video. We, what if this is the first one you're watching? It doesn't make any sense. So today we are going to be talking about a basic principle of the reality that we live in. Now, this might be the most basic principle by my thinking. The only thing that I could think that right now that is is of this caliber in its basicness <laughs> is the cycles, right? Seasons have cycles, the ocean waves have cycles, women have cycles. I bet men have cycles too in some way that I don't isn't so obvious. Hello, this is me editing the video realizing, you know, when I was talking about all the things that have cycles, I named seasons, okay, nature, um, and the ocean waves and the moon and all of these things are feminine things so actually maybe men don't have cycles because females are nature I just needed to put that in there and so yes okay um, the moon has cycles and um, the moon actually takes us to the principal we're talking about today, okay, which is the opposition. Now, what is a full moon? That is when the sun and the moon are at 180 degrees. They are in opposition, okay? And I think that the principle of opposition, the principle of polarity is what causes manifestation in physical reality. And to start from the very beginning, let's talk creation. You know, um, you've got the opposition of Adam and Eve, beginning of life, okay? You can also go to, there's the Shinto creation myth with, oh, Izignami, is and is I don't speak Japanese, but it's Izignami, and is uh, yeah, just look up Shinto creation, he who invites, she who invites. That is an awesome, awesome creation myth, and it is the masculine, I don't want to give it away because it's a wonderful story, but so you should read it, but basically it is yin and yang that create these two worlds, okay? Um, the light world and the dark world, dark and light, okay? Light and dark. And then you've also got all the Egyptian mythologies and, you know, there isn't one mythology for creation in Egyptians, but pretty much all of them is there's this dark void of the water, the god comes out and creates life, okay? You've got this dark water chaos, create, the god creates order, okay? So you've got chaos and order, opposites make life, and it's also feminine, masculine, make life, okay? Opposites. And I think that this even applies to great art you know, because great art isn't something that's preconceived. It's something that the artist asks a question and through the art, he figures it out, you know? I mean, I don't want to ruffle any feathers here, but I feel like that was the difference between why uh, Get Out was so good versus Us. Like when I watched um, Get Out, it was so gripping, you know, you didn't know what was gonna happen. You could feel, it was it was truthful you know and us felt very preconceived you know you think of any any great piece of literature you know an author doesn't know what's gonna happen it's not pre-planned out it's almost like he is writing or she is writing the story you know it's it's the answer to a question and that is an unknown, okay, chaos creating order. And then you think about it, even just our, you know, the correspondence of how we are created, life is created, okay? The sperm and the egg, and that creates life, you know? And then that's kind of interesting because you think about that and you go, oh, well then my life is beyond this physical reality of polarity because I contain inside me the yin and the yang. You know, and when I was thinking about this, it made me think, well, that's actually a really good argument for why whatever is inside of us, you know, maybe not our, you know, soul or our 
the way our personality works by the chemicals in our brains but whatever that life inside of us is you know that seems to be beyond this physical reality and you know maybe that means it will continue hopefully i hope so <laughs> so if opposition polarity creates you know the physical reality if that's what the, the 3d consists of then why are we here then what's the point of this reality you know of this dimension i think the point would then be to learn what things are what we are what's black what's white what's chaos what's order what's love what's hate what's happiness what's sadness you know because you can't really know what happiness is till you know what sadness is. You can't really know what black is until you know what white is, you know? You can't really know what truth is without dishonesty. You know, if you talk to someone that has never told a lie in their life, you know, and they tell you what truth is, haha, <laughs> -ha. no, they don't know, you know? As someone who has been to the other side of that polarity, I used to lie a lot, you know, I got into this period of two years when I'd really lost myself, I was just a mess, and I got into lying, and I'm so thankful for that because when I really turned my life around, um, I, I made a decision, I said, I am going to stop lying, no more lying, and when I tell you just that single thing, how that changed my life. I mean, I will never ever go back. It, it was amazing. And now I know what honesty is. Okay, I know what it means to be honest. You know, where you can be without it. You know, and I think that's, that's the point of this physical reality, you know? And that's why other people are so important because other people tell you what you are and they tell you what you're not. Okay, they are the reflection of you, not as like, oh, you are me. And maybe in that too, because polarity, right? You are me, but also we're both life, right? But also you are not me. You are your own reality, you know? And I am my own reality, you know? And people that don't get this, you know, there are a lot of them walking around. There's this theory in psychology. It's called the false consensus effect. I think it's also called the typical mind theory, but I learned it as a false consensus effect. And it's really funny because it's like, I don't know, 80% of bodybuilders think that, you know, 80% of people are on steroids and, you know, everyone, most drug, drug addicts think that most people are also taking drugs. We have this idea that everybody is doing what we're doing, you know? So I guess that's everybody, you know, that's probably me in a way, everyone in a way, you know, because we don't know what they're doing. So we just assume that they're kind of doing what we, we're doing, but they're not, they're not. Everyone is their own reality. And when you get into contact with people, you figure out what your reality is and what their reality is, you know? And I think that's really beautiful, you know? And I think that's why it feels so important when you can be your authentic self in relationship because then you are finding out who you are. If you're just molding to someone else, if you're pretending to be like what someone else is, then you're, you know, that's a whole other thing. You're disting yourself from yourself. You know, I'm sure we're gonna talk about that a lot, but Therapy, the point of therapy is to find your authentic experience. When you can be your authentic self in a, in a relationship, that will seriously emotionally regulate you and it will feel really good. And um, maybe that's because we're connecting with one of the points that it is to be here, you know, to individualize myself. What am I? What are you? What is that? Okay, so how can we balance this opposition within ourselves okay obviously we're gonna have to balance two things the two polarities and first is our intellect how do we balance our intellect well the yin and the yang are not still in my opinion they are moving i had a yin and the yang that was gonna be here but it's not here and i'm not gonna go get another one or print one up because i'm not and but you get it it's moving okay and in each one there's the potential of the other in the black there's the white potential and the white there's the black potential and we need to keep moving okay cycling 
between the two things. And I think this is how we we balance ourselves intellectually. We understand both sides of the coin, you know, whether this is on an emotional level, like I said, with the truth, you know, understanding what truth is, or, you know, someone that has done drugs, if you can empathize with them, you know, if, if you're someone who's, you know, never done drugs, or you don't even have to do drugs, but looked into, you know, what addiction is, you're going to empathize, oh, like, you don't even have control of this, you know, you are so in chaos, okay? that you've got no order, you've got no control. I empathize with you, you know, instead of just being like, well, I've never done drugs, you know, and drugs are just bad and they're just bad, you know, you're just understanding one side of the coin, you know? And um, this doesn't have to just be, you know, empathetically, it can also be intellectually, you know, in politics, they like, they say the two stupidest versions of both sides, you know, I mean, a good one of this as an example, and I'm sorry to trigger anyone, but like the the pro-life, pro-choice, you know? I mean, one side believes that you're killing a baby, you know, and one side believes that women have the right. You know, I, I personally am pro-choice, um, but I understand the other side. Like, I'm not gonna say, oh, a fetus isn't life, you know? No, you think that somebody, or, this person thinks that someone is killing a baby like i empathize with you that must be very upsetting now yes a lot of these people do have their own um internal contradictions of but then they'll support war or something you know but we all have these okay we all are total hypocrites so if you're accusing someone else of being a hypocrite i'll tell you what you are a hypocrite too <laughs> you know and so I think that understanding both sides, you're not going to be as shaken, you know, you're going to understand, oh, you know, and there are certain things that aren't okay, like hate and stuff like that, you know, but I think you have to try to understand on an intellectual level and not just close your eyes, just like, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it, listen to what they're saying, you know, listen to what your enemy says to you, okay, you want to know, you know, you don't want to just stick to one side of anything, you want to understand both sides of everything. Because that, you know, it makes you smarter. And it also means you're balanced, you know? You're not, like, closing your ears off, you know? You want to hear what your enemy says. Okay, so we've balanced ourselves on an intellectual level, the yang. Now we must balance ourselves on an energetic level, the yin. Okay? And the energetic is... Our masculine and feminine nature our animus and our anima okay the anima the feminine nature this is your emotions are you in touch with your emotions you know are you observing your emotions because if you're not observing your emotions when they come up and, and in touch with them and seeing how they they feel then you're being controlled by them because we don't think logically okay we have emotions before we think. So every thought you have is filtered by your current emotional states. That is a proven fact by science, brain, technology stuff that I don't do, but I have read about. And um, that is 100% a fact. So if you are not observing your emotions of, oh, you know, I was really um, anxious today, and so then I lashed out at someone, you know, it's not like, oh, that person's just a bad person and I just lashed out at them because they're so annoying and they're the worst person ever. No, maybe maybe you were, you know, in a, in a state and you were on edge to lash out, you know? But the person who is not in touch with how they already were just thinks this other person is a horrible person. They're being controlled by their anima, okay? They're not balanced and then it's, it's no bueno, okay? And then how do we balance, oh, oh, and how do we balance this, okay, right? We, we start recognizing our own emotions when they come up, you know? Start recognizing, like, I didn't feel good today. When did I start not feeling good? Was it when I went to the mall with this person? The mall. Nobody goes to the mall. <laughs> Was it, or maybe they do, I don't know. I, you know, COVID, there's no inside, I don't know. Um, um. Or was it when I did this activity, you know? Because we all, we have these stories of who we are, you know? Oh, I like hanging out with this person. Maybe you don't anymore. Maybe y'all have grown to be two different people and you don't like hanging out with this person anymore. Maybe you don't like doing that activity anymore. 
okay? And we are, we are constantly changing. So our emotions tell us, you know, what's still good and what's still bad or what needs to change, you know? And it's giving us a cue as to how we should be moving, how we should be progressing as people and what we do and everything like that, okay? So just getting more in touch with, with that, with, with how we feel, what was the antecedent and what is the consequence, you know? If I hate my job, but I stay because it's safe, how am I gonna be doing in five years from now when I like hate my life, you know? And it just grows, you just hate it a little more every single day, you know? Where are you gonna be? You gotta listen to your emotions, okay? And then you have your animus, your masculine nature. And you balance this by committing to your will, you know? If you say you're gonna do something, do it. Okay, I understand how hard this is. What I did is I started doing to-do lists. To-do lists are awesome, okay? And at first, I wouldn't do my to-do list because I put 20 things on it and there was no way I was gonna do it. So then I started doing a, 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 a mega to-do list and I'd say, oh, today I think that I can do two things, honestly. It started with just two things, two really simple things, you know? But then every day, not every day, but some days I can manage a little more and some days I can manage a little less. So I make my to-do list manageable so I will actually do it. So I actually know that if I will myself to do something, I will do it. You know, sometimes to change our life, we can't just stay in, in a pattern that we have. We need to change our patterns and this takes our will, okay? We have to will ourselves to do something new or different. You know, and this is an extremely, extremely important tool, you know, that we should be able to do. We're not always willing ourselves to something, you know, sometimes you need to chill, but sometimes you gotta, you gotta shake it up. You gotta grow, you know? Yeah. yeah. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. Um, like it, dislike it if you didn't like it, I guess, if you want to be a fucking dick. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna keep making more of these, so tune back in, you know, and you know, like it so it shows up in people's feed and then more people like it, you know, because yeah, that would be cool.